Dr. Lakshmi Venu is the Deputy Managing Director of TAFE Motors and Tractors Limited, which is a part of the TAFE, one of India's largest manufacturers of tractors and agricultural equipment under the Massey Ferguson and Asia brands. The company is also the largest shareholder in the global tractor major, ACCO. Dr. Venu is also the Managing Director of Sudram Clayton Limited, which is a leading automotive component manufacturer in India, part of the overall TVS group. She also serves on the boards of TVS Motor Company and EZF Commercial Vehicle Control Systems India Limited as an independent director. Dr. Venu has an undergraduate, undergraduate degree in economics from the Yale University and holds a doctorate in engineering management from the University of Warwick, UK. Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, and please welcome Dr. Venu, Lakshmi Venu. The subject of her talk, which I have to necessarily announce now, is Emerging Aspirational Rural India. Over to Dr. Lakshmi Venu. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much, Mr. Anand, for the warm introduction. I am honored to be here in your midst today for the Palkiwara Memorial Lecture event, particularly as in my family we grew up hearing of Mr. Palkiwala's work and notably of his exceptional personal commitment in going above and beyond the call of duty for any cause that he deemed to be fair and just. When I met Mr. Anand, he shared the Foundation's vision for building a dialogue around issues that will shape India's future. Today we live globally in a rapidly changing, technology-driven and often volatile world. And I strongly believe that India, in fact, is very fortuitously placed in this context. So it's up to us now to achieve this potential. My work takes me to two very different parts of India one in the manufacturing sector into a more urbanized India, and the other entirely into the heart of rural India. What gives me enormous optimism is that today, perhaps for the first time, we see both ready to fire together. And today I'd like to share with you all just a few observations on the changes I see in the latter. And I hope that each of us can contribute in some way towards accelerating the growth of rural India and bridging the urban-rural development gap. Today's rural India, in my experience, is very different from what it was a decade or even five years ago. It is seeing both opportunity and sheer ambition like never before. A few months ago, I had gone to meet a tractor customer in Madhya Pradesh, a young lady in her 20s. Her father owned a modest-sized farm and passed away while still paying the loan on his first tractor. Instead of going the traditional route and accepting help from uncles and others in the family to run the farm, she chose to drop out after the second year of engineering college, took over the farm, renegotiated her loan, and today is the proud owner of a fleet of tractors and agricultural equipment and a thriving rental business. She has educated her younger siblings. Her younger sister is poised to join the Indian Army and her younger brother to be a chartered accountant. So this is the ambition and enterprise of a young, aspirational, rural India. And it is far from an isolated example. Nearly 65% of our population is rural. And we cannot progress as a country by leaving rural India behind. For us to move forward on all parameters, including key social indicators, it is most important to have an economic revival that is sustainable in our villages. This movement is well underway, and my heartfelt appreciation for the government initiatives that are clearly and visibly making an impact on the ground. Today, large parts of the country have access to water, electricity, quality housing, and primary health care that they did not a decade ago. It's very visible as you travel through parts of the country. The government's push on infrastructure is enabling both employment today while building the foundation of a stronger and more connected rural economy for tomorrow. Better access to information and connectivity through the digital revolution has surely changed the face of our country. 
The digital space for rural India is a source of information, a marketplace, and increasingly a solution provider. And I do see that each small change through this medium is accelerating rural entrepreneurship. Today, one of our customers, a potato farmer in UP, has decided to store his crop in cold storage to wait for better prices from Bengal, thanks to the information that is available to him online. In the interim, he's transformed the productivity of a short-term banana crop simply by looking at ideas from Gujarati farmers on YouTube. <laughs> so we're regularly starting to see seasoned farmers implement and adopt practices that are unusual to their region. They're not seeing this around them purely due to the power of easy access to information online. When I visited a potential customer's home hours after the launch of a new tractor that he was certainly yet to see, he had done a remarkably thorough analysis of it from all that was already available online and had some very insightful and hard-hitting questions for me as well. Digital payments too have changed the financial dynamic in our country. At a small Maggie stall while traveling in a part of the country considered remote, I'd asked for some change from a Maggie vendor along with my Maggie. And he said, Madam, mere paas change nahi hai. Aapke paas jeepe nahi hai kya? <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, rural, rural India is receiving unprecedented ease in the access to capital. In addition to and apart from farming, rural India is replete with micro-entrepreneurship. This is coming through multiple channels, from government schemes that support startups in India aligned to the government's vision to support rural entrepreneurship, the reach of NBFCs, which has deepened quite substantially in recent times, and the presence of NGOs, who play a vital role in connecting communities with the right schemes and marketplaces that they need. Notably, if I may add, has been the support for an increase in women's entrepreneurship. I do see this combination of factors coming together to give rise to an unprecedented rural enterprise, innovation, and prosperity that could change the landscape of our rural economy. The big opportunity and the challenge then in front of all of us today is how do we build on this momentum and support this energy? Each of us as businesses, individuals, or a foundation surely have a role to play. The focus of the foundation, both at the TAFE and the TVS sides of my family's businesses, have largely been in the rural sector. At TAFE's foundation, we believe that today, farming is not what it was before. It is now a story of rural enterprise. With over 80% of Indian farmers being small and marginal, our goal is to help our nation of small farmers create profitable, sustainable farms. Inspired by the vision of my grandfather who opened J Farm in the 60s as a model farm in Tamil Nadu to spread customized practices for the region to promote productivity, we seek to scale and build on this mission across the country. With sustainability being a focus, and that can very well come with small farms as much as with the larger ones, we promote farming which takes a balanced approach to nutrient management, by emphasizing regionally optimal and cost-effective choices of seeds, inputs, multi-cropping choices, water and soil management practices, and a recycling of farm waste for productive purposes supported by mechanization. Moreover, to support their sustainable profitability so they can continue to enjoy a stable livelihood from their farm, we focus on a host of practices like animal husbandry, agroforestry, and others, and with significant latent potential to mechanize for productivity, we started JFarm Services, a free of cost marketplace platform to enable pla farmers of all sizes to create and benefit from a peer-to-peer -peer rental ecosystem. Again, reinforcing and giving scope and a platform to rural entrepreneurship, an ecosystem that has today, in a few years, touched 30 lakh farmers across 16 states, and I believe a lot more potential exists. This is only possible because of education and digital access coming together 
and we are very excited to scale this with partnerships with other institutions of all varieties. At Srinivasan Services Trust, the foundation of TVS Motor and Sundaram Clayton, we work on sustainable, holistic development of our villages. Our investment is almost entirely in human infrastructure, where we seek to be enablers and catalysts, taking a 360-degree approach. So we begin with community trust building, move on to enabling us to realize at the village the latent potential of women's entrepreneurship supported by adult literacy, and going then to sanitation, better agri practices, water conservation, and connecting the community with a host of benefits that they are entitled to but may be unaware of how to access. Our success in this approach has been our ability to develop community leadership as it reaches a stage of maturity, and then enabling us to move our team to the next cluster of villages where the earlier village is able to lead and sustain its own progress. Our work in SST has highlighted to me personally the extraordinary latent potential to create successful cycles away from poverty to prosperity that can now be passed on by the village leadership themselves from one generation to another, ultimately not needing us anymore. In our work in both business and in the foundation, Today, I see the most opportune coming together of a focus on development enablers from the government, covering the basic needs of the economically least advantaged, a drive to improve and widen infrastructure, coupled with digitization and access to capital, in a hardworking, very young, and very ambitious nation. While urban India today is well poised and is seen to be the most attractive global investment destination, Perhaps it does receive more focus. And bridging the urban-rural gap is an urgent need for a more equitable nation. I urge each of you to consider participating in accelerating this movement, be it professionally or personally, through time, money, or a voice. I do believe the next decade will be India's, and that each of us has a role to play in realizing it. Roshni, it has been inspiring to see the work done by the Shiv Nadar Foundation, particularly in the area of education, and I look forward to hearing your presentation today. Thank you very much to the Palkiwala Trust for the opportunity to participate in this event held in the honor of such an inspiring visionary. Thank you.